I like the trigger warnings and I like political correctness because I think they are putting pressure on the speech of the rest of us. So like yeah. the punk rock person who comes in and is, you know, is just like, fuck the system or whatever. Yeah. They are you saying. You forgot your trigger warning on the word fuck, by the way. There's okay, a bunch of people who are really disturbed. T-dubs. Trigger yeah. warning. Trigger warning. So um, like <laughs> those people, they, um, they uh, are saying back to professors that, oh, look, I'm going to hamstring everything you can say. You know, there's a great Philip Roth novel about someone who said the word spook, meaning spy. In, right. And, and that was taken as a racist epithet. And suddenly his life goes into spirals. Yeah. Well, what if the student in the 60s, the student would have been like, man, you're hegemony. You're the establishment. Yeah. We hate you. That guy's life goes into spirals. Right. So the pushing back on authority now done often by women who often claim they feel unsafe, but ends up making the, that professor figure feel unsafe. The guy with right. the mic now feels unsafe. The guy with the mic who's like, you know, you can see this in Trump's tweets. Yeah. Trump is always getting his feelings hurt because someone doesn't like what he said and no right. one's grateful to him. You know, I think the people with, who need the trigger warnings are the people who are like, oh, I can't say you've got a great figure to my colleague anymore without right. her getting all offended. Yeah. Well, listen, chill out, guy. Yeah, yeah, say it or don't say it. If you make her cry, that's your deal, you know? Yeah, I, it's, a, it's or, an interesting moment in time we live in. It feels like the Trump movement... A large portion of it is, is a reaction. But I mean, it's, I'm interested in your take on it, but just on the free speech effort, it just yeah. seems like he, the one third of people who feel like they don't know how to speak anymore because yep. of political correctness, because yep. of just, you know, trigger warnings, something like that. These two groups of people, this trigger warning, you know, safe spaces group combined who are afraid of words and this other group that wants to say racist stuff yeah. are now driving the dialogue of the country. Absolutely. It's like Absolutely. the two worst groups of people. That's ingenious. I mean, yeah. that is really brilliant. But what's interesting to me is the people trying to shut down the press are actually, well, certainly not the, certainly not the trigger warning safe space people. For example, a great civil libertarian, local, um, with a lot of money, famous name, famous name, who just shut down Gawker. Yeah. Um, you know, Peter Thiel. P okay. You can say his name. All right, Peter Thiel. Peter so, Thiel, closeted you know, gay man, uh, outed by a, uh, a gay writer working for a gay publisher who both had a very specific agenda to out gay men. Yes. Let's just call it what it is. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So he, um, but that is the kind of thing that to me, a civil liberties, a real civil, li civil liberties nut, someone who's really invested in that precious, precious First Amendment would not mobilized to shut that down. So Trump is trying to shut down the Washington Post or at least shut them out of his campaign. Yeah. And Peter Thiel's trying to pull the plug on Gawker, which has actually done incredibly enterprising reporting since I first started reading it. So Wait a second. Haven't they barbecued you with lies and unfair truths? You know what? I can take it. But they have. In all honesty, they've written lies about you. They've been very brutal to you. Um, yes or no? Well, you know, they've... Uh, Nick Denton is a friend. They've been good. They've been bad. He's a friend of me and mine. But okay, but he yeah. they have written stuff about you that you would consider untrue or less and, than honest. And guess what? It hurt my feelings. And guess what? I, still grew, I got over it. Got it. Um, and certainly if they told the truth about me, like that I'm gay if I were gay, yeah. I would have a hard time considering that libel, right? I mean, there's certain things I, I'm, you know, to what the about extent that I'm a public figure. What about if sex tapes? Or if you, have, if you have, I'm assuming you're, if you, if you had a sex tape that you made in the privacy of your home and they if stole it. If it was pretty. And, <laughs> yeah. Depending on the lighting. You, I want to hear about where the role of Photoshop in that. And then yeah, exactly. I'm okay. But no, let's be honest here. You're being candid. You, would, you yeah. don't care about outing. You would, you would not feel good about it, but you wouldn't want to sue them into oblivion. What if they stole a private sex, or they bought a private sex tape or a stolen manuscript of a work you did that you never intended to be printed and it destroyed your career. How would you feel then? Um, yeah. You know, career destruction is a terrible thing. How about and, life destruction? Um, I don't know that it, they can destroy my life. You know, someone if asked they had, me. If you had a mm -hmm. sex tape and they published it, you don't think that would destroy your life? Um, do people still distribute sex tapes? If it I mean, was stolen. I'm talking about a stolen sex tape. I mean, tape. I'm a that nerdy the, writer. I think maybe someone would be like, oh, she's a lot more exciting than we thought. I don't think you're being intellectually honest right now. I'll be honest. Because you, you well, if you just, it's one thing to have a thick skin about they don't like your writing or something like that. But if they stole your sex tape. I think I'm not being, I, I'm being uh, intellectually honest. I think it's possible I'm not being emotionally honest. But okay. also, this is like one of those, like, if your wife were raped, wouldn't you want the guy to get killed? I just don't know. So, like, they steal a sex tape. First of all, it's hard for me to imagine because you don't it may sex. surprise you, but at 46, <laughs> I don't make a lot of sex tapes. Um, and, um, and I can't, yeah, I just can't imagine or, the novelty of having that distributed. But I will tell you, my career definitely set a, had a, suffered a setback, and I think I lost my job at Yahoo News because of something I wrote on Twitter.
This is my favorite ad read on the planet. I love Audible. I've been an Audible customer for a decade, and I have hundreds of audiobooks. Yes, you heard that right. Literally hundreds of audiobooks. And, you know, I like to hike. You guys see pictures of me on my social media hiking. Sometimes I go hiking with my daughter. A lot of times I decide to walk from meeting to meeting in the city. I leave a little extra time, half an hour, 45 minutes, and I'm in the car, right? You're driving, going down to Palo Alto, coming back to the city, stopping everywhere in between doing my business. And when I do that and I'm on the treadmill or the elliptical or the rowing machine, I like to get smarter. I like to be more worldly and audible is my way to do that. I have uh, the Platinum offering, which is two books a month. You get dozens of books a year. And, you know, I've told you about some books I've been um, listening to, The Man Who Knew Infinity, uh, The Hobbit, which I listen to with my daughter, Building Great Sentences, which you probably see in my work. I've been doing these really long, complicated compound sentences, and it's really helped me. I'm doing an Increase Your Vocabulary book right now from The Great Lessons. And Smarter, Faster, Better was my last pick. But I have one out of left field. And I'm going to tell you my technique on Audible. I go to audible.com and I look at what's best selling and I look in categories that maybe I'm weak in or maybe I don't have as much exposure to. One of those is science. I need to be up on science. And sometimes I feel, you know, a little self-conscious. Maybe I don't know a lot of the classics. Maybe I don't know a lot of the things I should know. And I saw this book, Sapiens, and it had over 4,000 reviews and it had four and a half stars. And so I'm always looking for that when I'm, when I'm looking through the bestsellers, when I'm looking through the highest ranked, I'm looking for two things. One, a lot of reviews and a high rating. And then I go read the reviews and the reviews on Audible are amazing. There's so many super fans like me on there and I don't take the time to review books. So I feel kind of guilty about that, but I will draft off of the people who do. And Sapiens is a 15-hour book, and I'm in, I'm, I'm in chapter 6 of 21 right now, and I am riveted, like so riveted by this book, Sapiens, which is about humans and how there were multiple types of humans on the planet concurrently, and how we domesticated animals and how we domesticated wheat or how wheat domesticated us and how we were hunter-gatherers, and it just explains the history and the evolution of humans, and it really relates back to today and people you know, uh, people's own happiness today and how we're evolving. This book is amazing. I literally was in my garage. I parked and I stayed in my car for 15 minutes. I couldn't stop listening to it. And there was a great feature in Audible that I um, discovered about a year ago. It's the sleep timer. So when I'm going to go to bed, I have sometimes I have a hard time sleeping, right? We all have a hard time because we keep looking at our damn screens. We keep doing Twitter or Facebook and, you know, looking at things in our social feed. Here's a better strategy. You go to Audible. You get a really great book. You put on the sleep timer for 15 minutes. Then you fall asleep listening to a great book. And if you're still awake, you put it on another 15 minutes. If you fall asleep and you think you missed the last five minutes, when you wake up in the morning, you just rewind five minutes and you listen to the, the text over again or whatever. This is what I've been doing and it works great for me. Um, you own your books. It's not a streaming service. That would suck if you didn't own the books. You own the books, um, which is great because my my wife and my daughter also listen to books on our account. And... Um, I also can listen to them now on the uh, Alexa. So I have the um, Amazon Echo, and I'm like, Alexa, play this audiobook from Audible, and it does it. It's great. Um, I love reading books, but, you know, my eyes get tired, and a lot of times I have to have my eyes on the road. Self-driving cars are not here yet. So Audible is the perfect solution. I am a huge fan of Audible. Go to audible.com slash twist and get your 30-day trial membership. And I really, I, I got to tell you, like, I literally want to stop reading right now and stop the episode and go read Sapiens because I am loving this book, A Brief History of Humankind. And it's not brief, it's 15 hours. And where do you get like a value like that? For 10 bucks, you have 15 hours? It's, it's unbelievable. It's less than a dollar an hour. Um, so go ahead and check out Sapiens. I love it. And I'm uh, looking for some people to talk to it about. So if you're a friend of mine and you plan on having dinner or lunch with me, please read the book so we can talk about it. Go ahead and go to audible.com slash twist, audible.com slash twist, and download my book of the week for free by signing up at audible.com slash twist. Go get Sapiens for free. It's on your Uncle Jason. Okay, let's get back to this amazing episode. I could talk about Audible all day, and I frequently do. Okay, let's get back to this amazing episode. <laughs> 